Meanwhile, as economic woes grow across the African continent, the opposition parties in many countries are tapping into the public discontent, from South Africa in the south to Tunisia in the north, and even Senegal and Kenya. Monday is likely to witness demonstrations in several African countries. In South Africa, the Economic Freedom Fighters, one of the main opposition parties, has called for a national shutdown in South Africa. Thousands are taking part in these demonstrations called by the opposition. The third largest party of the country called for protest against the rolling blackouts, increasing unemployment rate and recent corruption scandals. The party is also calling for President Cyril Ramaphosa to step down. The opposition party said that while the protests have been initiated by them, everyone is free to take part in it. People are marching across streets with banners that read, Ramaphosa must go. Meanwhile, the government has called for the protest to be peaceful and warned that any lawlessness and violence will not be tolerated. Around 3,000 soldiers have also been deployed along with police, crime intelligence and private securities to prevent these protests from turning violent. However, the protesters could also be seen clashing with security forces in Johannesburg. Reportedly, some protesters have already been arrested. Businesses are also taking extra caution at this time. While some have decided to close down due to fears of looting, others have decided to remain open. The High Court has not declared the shutdown as illegal. It did state that the EFF and its members are prohibited from shutting down school stores or businesses. The court further said that the party cannot stop any trade of traffic on the public roads. Is not a permission we are seeking. We are giving them information so that they can organize alternative routes. They confuse that to be seeking a permission. There is a constitutional court decision that nobody requires a permission to protest. Now the anti-government demonstrations are being witnessed in Kenya, Senegal and Tunisia as well. People are expressing discontent against the high cost of living in Tunisia. In Senegal, tensions are on the rise due to politically charged leader of main opposition leader Osmane Sonko. If convicted, Sonko may be ineligible to stand as a candidate in the 2024 election. Kenyans too are expressing their anger. Kenya opposition leader Raila Odenga urged people to assemble at Nairobi city centre for mass demonstrations against increasing cost of living. My good uh, friend Raila Odinga, you cannot, enough is enough. You cannot continue to blackmail the country. And we have no problem with you organized demonstration. But please, it is your responsibility to work with the police to make sure that the rest of the citizens of Kenya, their lives are not disrupted, their property is not destroyed, their business is not affected, they can go to work, you can carry out your demonstration. He said that these demonstrations are against the government's refusal to allow the audit of the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission Service for possible malpractice. Take note that on 20th March of 2023, we have a date with destiny in Nairobi. <laughs> On that day, our supporters throughout the country shall stage a massive procession in Nairobi for a legitimate and inclusive government. Save that date. 
We thank you and let the action begin. For more on this, we're now being joined by correspondent Calden Ogmu from Johannesburg. Hi, Calden. You're joining us from Johannesburg, which is one of the protest sites. Get us up to speed with what is actually happening on the ground and how does the security situation look like? planned this from two months ago and now this uh, you can see the situation right here i am at the heart of johannesburg it's called brownfontein this area usually is surrounded by universities so more students live in this area last night what we saw a few students demonstrating ahead of national shutdown that is planned for today according to police minister who's briefing uh, the media this morning he said he updated that about 57 people nationwide have been arrested since last night. Remember now, this national shutdown was supposed to start only from midnight, but students had started demonstrating way ahead of midnight. Our police minister also said that over 20,000 tires have been confiscated uh, when police went invigilating houses in some of the, they call it a hotspot area. Right now where I am, it seems to be business as usual. Also, it's quite early here. It's just uh, gone past 7 a.m. You can see behind me businesses are still closed or we are yet to confirm that these businesses will remain open. But from the past, from the history, uh, history we've seen, whenever protests or anything like that happens, this area, most businesses that are here, they remain shut down. Of course, the government is against this national shutdown. EFF say this is not an EFF national shutdown. It, uh, it is a shutdown that has been called for the concerned citizens of this country. Some of their demands are for the president, Cyril Ramaphosa, to step down immediately, as they say that President Ramaphosa has failed the state. Their another demand is the load shedding, end of load shedding. The rolling blackouts has had the citizens fed up with the current government. And also the rising unemployment rate. They said enough is enough. People are going to take to the streets. Of course, as EFF says, thousands of people are expected to be on the street, not just here in Brampontein, but throughout the country. Some of the hotspot areas, the police say, are this Johannesburg CBD, Brampontein, as well as the Pretoria, where the union building, the president's offices, office is. So we will be going to that location after this. But currently, as of now, it's very peaceful here. Some of the people, they've been, we've been seeing them going to work. We've seen some of the buses, transports actually moving. Uh, we, were, we, were, we were told by the EFF uh, previously in the briefing that they will, be, uh, they will not allow any transport, uh, uh, movement of any transport. But it seems uh, to be business as usual in Bramfontein, at, at least as of now. Right. Thank you, Calden, for joining us live on Beyond and sharing your insights with us. We will, of course, be tracking this very closely. Thanks very much. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.